couple brushes. So I'm just gonna touch base with you just to make sure you got everything you need. We are using acrylic paint tonight. We are painting a perspective, a one point perspective looking up at the sky. And I have two types of brushes here. I've got a hog's hair, really rough brush um, that we're gonna use for the background, the sky color. And then I have one that's um, like a sable or horse hair. It feels like a makeup brush. It's a little softer and that's gonna be great for drawing the trees. So if you have those two types of brushes, that's really gonna be helpful. Um, not necessary to have a really thin detail one, but if you have that, you might want that for the tiny little dots or limbs or things like that. Um, paint, you're gonna need some paint. If you're doing this in uh, watercolors, great. Um, it's still gonna work for you just as, just the same. You're gonna probably have that whole pan of colors. You're gonna still do the background first, and then you would put those trees on top. So I have all the primary colors, blue, red, yellow, and I've got white, because I'm gonna be doing my sky first. So make sure you've got some white handy. I also have a gross looking cup that I don't drink out of, so I don't get tempted to drink out of the wrong one. And of course, lots of napkins. Not only to clean my brushes, but maybe if I have to pick up a drip or dab uh, something with that. I'm working on foam plates. I find these easy for me as my palette because um, I can keep a record after I'm done. Maybe I didn't finish today and I've got that color mixed up on here. I also can slip it inside a gallon baggie if I didn't finish tonight. And I could, uh, it'll keep up in the fridge for a couple more days inside the gallon baggie. Just make sure they don't think it's ketchup and mustard. So <laughs> make sure you label it as your paint. And I think that's all we need for tonight. Um, as I said, we're doing a one point perspective. I don't think I need to use chalk tonight or a piece of charcoal. I think we can just paint with our brush. It's gonna be pretty simple. If you've never done this before, it looks intimidating, it's really not. I'm gonna walk you through the whole thing. So let's start with our hog's hair brush. And I've got my paint here. I've got um, blue and white. You need to decide if you're gonna do a really deep blue like the one over here in this picture, or do you want more of a daytime sky? Believe it or not, there is a light blue underneath all of this. So I'm gonna start out with a light blue. And then once I've drawn all of my tree trunks and my limbs, then I come back and add like a patchwork of color. It's just kind of a, a random thing that I've created because I like color. So, all right, so I'm gonna put on my blue. That looks a little dark, so I'm gonna lighten that up a little bit. And you can see I'm kind of just going every which way. It does not have to be uh, painted the way air flows or, or as I think trees grow. I just want to get the background paint on the canvas. This happens to be a 16 by 20 size canvas. You may be working with eight by 10, nine by 12, anything will do. If you ever need to recycle a canvas, let's say you, you did a project last week in my class and you just are not happy with it, please uh, prep the canvas before you um, come to class. Like just paint over the whole thing with white or blue or something on there and you'll be ready to go. Uh, but I don't encourage that. I always say, say try to um, keep your work around that you did and you'll see your progress. And besides, you might come back to it later and it might have fresh, fresh eyes on it and you can um, fall in love with it for whatever reason you didn't love it before. <laughs> I usually always start new unless it's something somebody just gave me and said, hey, I don't want this anymore. Can you use it? I think I even showed you a canvas that had a hole in it once. And I'm in the process of making little mini videos so I can show you like how to uh, clean up a canvas. And so you can go to my subscriber page, just email me if you wanna find these little tidbits of hints and inspiration and you'll be able to do that. 
So I'm really grateful to be here tonight. I've been uh, doing these for all during the pandemic, thanks to the city that I live in. Uh, and I will be continuing them. So not as many, and but we will be doing more Thursdays and Tuesdays through November. So I'm really excited about that. Just wanted to share that with you. Um, so I'm in the process of coming up with new designs for you all. And the Tuesdays, typically I work in watercolor or oil pastels. And then on Thursday nights, I work in acrylics. So there's something for everybody, but even if your favorite medium is not either of those, what if you're a ceramic artist or you are a photographer? This is still really good for you because you are studying your creativity in a different medium, but you're still talking about composition, you're talking about color, you're still getting those creative juices going, even though you're not familiar with that particular medium. I purposely take classes outside of my wheelhouse because it challenges me to see things in different ways. All right, you can tell I'm just filling in lots of chatter while I'm putting on this blue background here. I think I'll dip my brush in a little bit of water to extend my paint that I mixed up. Just add a little bit of water to it. I don't want any direction, so that's why I'm kind of going every which way. The hog's hair holds more paint, so that's why I start out with that when I'm doing background. We'd be here a lot longer if we were doing it with the sable or the horse hair. So I just want to get it on there. These brushes come in different thicknesses. I think you've, you've probably worked with a chip brush before around your house. Those utility brushes that come in one inch and two inch. I use those for really big canvases. So don't be afraid to pick up a package of those at the contractor store, at the big box stores, and then you have those to do big canvases. So I am just about finished putting my light blue sky in here. I'm, I picked a um, summer theme, so the colors to me just remind me of summer. Um, but you might be into fall, and that's what this one is over here. I'll get it a little bit closer to you. Yeah, you can see that one up close. So it's got fall colors. Since fall is coming up, there's a little moon hanging out in the background. This is just solid blue right out of the can. Not much going on there. Put that back. Ever so gently. Okay. Squirt a little bit more white because I ran out of paint. And yes, you do see my uh, email address up here. If you have any questions, uh, and Rosie will put it in the chat box later too. So you can, you can ask me questions now, which is what's nice about taking this class live right now. You can ask me questions. I will not say your name out loud, um, but I can answer it and everybody can hear the answer if I have an answer for it. Because if you're watching now on YouTube, it's harder for you than to interact with me, but you're still having fun and you can email me after the fact. Plus, email me all your, your, your paint, beautiful paintings. We have a gallery and Rosie will tell you more about it later, um, or we can share our art. Okay, I got enough paint on the canvas. It looks like a beautiful sky. Looks like where I live right now, there's not a cloud in the sky. So <laughs> it's very, very uh, blank. Now, this is the fun part. You don't even have to wait for this to dry, really, because you're going to be drawing brown over the top. How do you make brown? Because you did not see brown on my, my lovely palette here. 
it is all the primary colors. So I love that, that I could take all of these, a little bit of blue, a little bit of yellow, a little bit of red, and I'm gonna make my brown trunks. You'll be able to tell if it's looking too green and you need to add a little more red. You'll be able to tell if your brown is brown or maroon or green. It's not an exact science, it's not equal parts. Because everybody's using probably a different blue, a different type of yellow. I don't know what you're using, so I'm not going to say use equal parts of everything. Okay, so I got a pretty brown, and that's what I'm going to draw my trees with. But before I do that, I need to make myself a point in the middle of the canvas because all my trees are going to point at the point. That is the nature of a one point perspective. So there are two points, there's three point perspectives, but we're going to keep it simple tonight. We're just going to do one point. Maybe we'll do some twos in the, in the future. Okay, I am just going to give myself a tiny little dot that I'm going to cover up later with a cloud or something, right? But I need to know where that dot is right now. So I just dotted on a little brown right there. Okay, I'm going to take my brush. I've got too much paint on my brush, I'm just going to wipe a little of it off. It was too clunky from mixing. And I'm going to draw trees. On this one, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. You, you would know thirteen. Okay, so that's not a bad thing. I, um, I love looking up at the aspen and the birch this time of year when I want to escape the heat and uh, just look up at these really tall skinny trees. If you're living where there's pine trees, you know what that's like. You're just looking up at these really skinny trees. We're drawing skinny, tall trees tonight. If you want to do live oaks and that kind of thing, you could do that too, and they're, but they're going to be harder for you to get to the point. All right. 13, here we go. I'm gonna start at the edge. And as I get closer to the point, I'm gonna twist my wrist. You see how I did that? So that made me use up all the paint that was on the brush and it made me thin it out. So I didn't get a big fat line by the time I got to the point. I'm not going all the way to the point, I'm stopping about two to three inches from the point, okay? Because I want to keep this open for clouds and so I can see my point too. Okay, that's one, let's keep going. About two, all right, I'm gonna start fat. I'm gonna twist my wrist. And the lines do not have to be straight, right? Because nature, nothing in nature is straight. So do not get hung up on the fact that my tree is a little crooked. I mean, look at this one. I got really crooked on that one. All right, here we go. Next one. The point is you gotta, gotta be reaching to the point. If you're not doing that, then it's not, it's just gonna look off. All right, that's three. You can have as many as you want. There's four. Five. I can fill in later, like I've got a little ghosting right here. I can see, I can fill that in later. The point is we're drawing right now. One, two, three, four, five, six. Isn't this fun? You're making a perspective, seven. If you're doing it in watercolor, you have the blue, right? And then you would be drawing your brown tree trunks over the blue. And it's nice to be able to do that in watercolor because there is blue and brown, so you don't have to wait for it to dry too much. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I keep losing my count. Eight, nine. I'm gonna put more at the bottom. Do you know why I'm putting more trees at the bottom? Putting more at the bottom because it's. I want this to be weighted. You could, um, you could turn your canvas however you want to orient it. You could make it equal all the way around. But if I'm gonna hang it in this direction, I kind of want more of the, the limbs at the bottom. So I'm gonna put 
here. I'm going to put one here. And a short one. I'm going to have a short guy right there. So there's my, my composition. That is the composition. It's called centralized. The central composition. Everything's around the middle. Okay. Now, I could start to do all these cute little limbs all around too, like they're holding hands. So I'm going to get another brush that's clean for the sake of time. And I am going to mix up some more brown. So I'm using my red, yellow, blue. I didn't really need to switch brushes today. Really. So. Okay, I'm going to make some limbs. So the trick is think about how it's growing. So if you have limbs coming down, which you could, but you, for the most part, they're growing up and they're growing out because they're touching each other. They're having fun, right? So they're not practicing social distancing. I'm sorry. In this one, they're actually kind of touching each other. So I'm kind of twisting my, my, uh, hand again as I make these twigs. As you get further away and closer to the point, my twigs get smaller. It should be getting really small and barely seen, barely seen at all. Okay, so let's go to the next tree. Okay, they're gonna be, I'm gonna make them really big down here. Isn't this fun? This is not a hard one on a Thursday night. I think this is really just um, very relaxing. If you join me Saturday morning, you're going to be excited too, because we are acrylic painting again, and we are doing another tree, but we're doing a palm tree up close. So, which I love, I love doing palm trees, one of my favorite things. But you'll need your coffee for that one, for sure. This one, not so much, you know. So I'm just going around around the ring here twisting my rip you know i have a long um handled brush that's because i'm working vertically right now i'm standing up if you're sitting down you know that's called you would probably want a short handled brush that way you're not poking your eye out when you're sitting so that's the only difference between long and short when you're at the paint store, I'm like, what is this long thing for? Okay. Okay, I'm gonna have this one kind of touch that one. I think that looks fun, you know? And they're just kind of marching around. You can just imagine these trees, these pine trees. Kind of makes me happy. It makes me think of outside and what, that's a good place to be right now. You know, walking, getting some fresh air. Where I live, you have to go really early in the morning. Okay, I'm getting lots of twigs. They're, they're, they're holding hands. And then you can make twigs off of twigs. So you could make these limbs have tinier twigs coming off of them if you choose. So I could come around and every so often put another little Y shape coming off of my branches. Especially up here near the top, the tippy tops, maybe those are really small. Yay. I have to encourage myself and cheer for myself because I, I can't hear you. So <laughs> I'm used to working in a classroom or with clients. It's really um, it's been an interesting transition for me to be talking to myself the whole time. A lot of you have known me since I was 
in my architecture days and you know me through creative aging classes. Okay, so I think I've got, I got a bunch of tree limbs. I think I'm liking them. Okay, so back to this spot right here. I think what I'm gonna do is go ahead and put in some white now and cover that ugly dot. So I'm gonna go back to my hog's hair brush that I started with. And I don't really need to clean it. I did kind of rinse it a little bit, but I'm just gonna stick it right into the white. It could have a tiny bit of blue on it, but not much, because I wanna just, I wanna pounce on it and make a couple of um, uh, atmospheric, cloudy, heaven, you know, because it's, it's really far away. I want this to look more um, on the horizon, really far away even though the horizon line is really not there. If you want a moon, you could draw your moon in there. That would be a good time to do that. Okay, yes, I'm gonna use my hands a little bit. Make it more as, as atmospheric, easy for me to say. Yeah, so now it's really kind of light and airy in the middle of my canvas and I covered the dot. Okay, now you're like, well, how did she get all of those colors going on? Well, I treated it like kind of like a patchwork. My mother was a master quilter and I spent lots of time looking at what she was doing. And now of course I do art quilting. She's long gone, but um, I'm, I've been left with a plethora of uh, fabric. And so um, to me, it, this is like taking different pieces of cloth and putting it throughout the branches. So I'm, I'm happy to see if you do the same. You may not be like that. You may be like the one over there and there's no patchwork in between. But this would be a good time to do that in order to make the, the sunny skies or the, the rainbowy effect that I've got going on. I'm using some white and I'm mixing it with my primary colors so that I get kind of a pastel, um, just more, just kind of light and airy. I'm going to take my white and I'm going to squeeze out some more white on there. See, you're learning all my little hints here. And I'm going to make a lemon yellow. I'm going to start with the lemon yellow. So white with some yellow. And I'm just going to pick some areas. Now, make sure you don't put a big blob on there because if you want it to look very light and airy, you don't want a big solid uh, patch of paint. You just want it to be so you can still see some of the blue behind. So I'm going to put some yellow there. Maybe I'll put some yellow here. Just kind of go around and look at look at opportunities to put some color. So this seemed like a good little trapezoid right there. Um, how about over here? This looks like a good spot. I don't fill in the whole thing, just a little suggestion. And this looks like a good little spot, this little rectangle here. Here, if you don't want to do this part, you don't have to do that. You might be like really wanting to do those solids over there. Okay. And maybe I'll put a little yellow here. And right here. If, you, if you're familiar with my work, you know I do like color. Kind of my thing. Okay, here we go. Oh, maybe we'll put some a little bit brighter yellow, like it's the sun or something coming down up here. Okay, so that's my first pass at doing little yellow patches. Now I'm going to do, uh, how about some teal patches? So to make teal, I need a little bit of blue, yellow, which makes green, and put some white in it. Ta-da! Passed 
pastel tealy, tealy color. So I'm going to put some of that in there. If you're um, doing the solid over there, you might at this point want to just start taking your brush, your hog's hair brush, okay, and dip it into whatever color leaves that you want. Let's say you want green leaves. So you're just going to be dipping it and you're going to be blotching it on, which is what I did in this case. I just took it and blotched it color after color after color. So I've got green in here. I've got red that I blotched on there. I'm just pouncing on it with the hog's hair. I've got uh, red, yellow, white. So with this technique, you start with your darkest color first not your lightest color and end with your lightest color okay if you have any questions let me know all right so now i'm back over here putting some teal here and here just filling it all in yes i'm using my finger because i don't want it to be solid i just want it to be a little bit of color there. Everybody doing okay? Great. Let's see now. I'm going to have just a little bit more teal, maybe over here. This is fun for all ages, by the way. You could repeat this with your, uh, your family members. Have your own little paint party. Okay, so I think I've got enough got about, oh, 20% or 15% yellow, 20% green. So I'm going to do another color now. Let's see. How about I do a little bit of pink, pastel pink. So I'm going to use a tiny bit of red, mostly white. Okay, to get some pastel and pinky colors. Pink right in there, a little pink in here. Wow. Definitely summertime. They call this scumbling when you uh, put on a, another coat and you can still see the background color behind it. See all these things you're learning? Okay. And maybe we'll put a little bit down there. All right. Now, I might do one that's just more green. So I'm going to add some blue to my teal down here. So it looks kind of like more of a slight blue. one more color. I want to go probably more green 
And then, well, maybe two more colors. Looks like I got a little purple in there too. So we'll do two more colors. So to make purple, we gotta have red, blue. I'm not using very much. I don't need very much. So it's gonna give you that nice maroon or eggplant looking color. So when I add white, it's gonna make it lavender. Isn't that pretty? Got too much blue in it. Yeah, it's a nice little lavender color. So let me use that. Oh, it looks kind of close to my pink. Maybe I'll put a tad more blue in it. Sometimes you don't know until you put it on the canvas and see what's happening. You know, if you go over some of your tree limbs, that's going to be fine because we're going to tidy them up. Okay, so I think the only thing left for me is to put in some grassy green and some darker blue. Grassy green would be yellow and blue makes grassy green. But I'm going to put some white, so now it's becoming more minty green. too light, so I'm going to go back and make a little bit more. I want that some of the edges to be a little bit darker. So I saved some of these corners to make the deeper values. You can have two colors in a patchwork, that's fine. See, maybe I'll turn this one into a piece of fiber art. Okay, now I'm going to do that darker blue. And I think I'll let Rosie talk for a second. I believe we're already halfway through. I can't believe that. It goes so fast. All right, so I'll let Rosie say a few words and I'm gonna go make some blue now. Awesome. So I will go ahead and link Deborah's tip links in the chat box. Um, those links, those are there for donations. Um, Deborah has been really great to work with and she's done such great things uh, for our community, for the city of Goodyear and um, for the arts and culture division. So we're just really grateful to have her and um, she uses those donations for supplies and to keep um, giving back to the community. So it's, she's definitely great. And um, like I said, I'll link those in the chat box and I'll also link um, a few other things. So we have a class coming up this Saturday and I hope you can all join us. Um, I'll, I'll link the registration link here in the chat box along with our virtual exhibit. Um, the virtual exhibit is live. It's been live for a few weeks. We have rotating art. If you send in your artwork, we will feature you. Um, it looks really pretty. It's, it's a really cool virtual exhibit. We have about 15 pieces up right now, but I can hold up to 23. So please do not hesitate to send those art pieces in. And I'll go ahead and let Deborah take over. Thank you. Thanks, Rosie. She's right. Um, it really, if you haven't seen the gallery yet, it looks stunning. Um, and it's from the past three months we've been painting together. 
And if you, if you sent your work in, of course, you do not have to if you're, if you're um, not wanting to share, but hopefully you will share it. You do, it can be anonymous. You don't have to put your name on it. Give it a title. Tell us, tell us a little bit about it. Um, and then um, you can kind of walk yourself through this gallery and looking at the walls that have all of your artwork on there. It's really fun. Really, 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 really fun. So I, and I get to see all the work. So email myself or Rosie or both of us and I'll get, we'll get you into the gallery space. Yes, and she mentioned my tip links and she's probably loading those as we speak. And I think, um, I didn't, you know, um, want to have to ask for those kinds of things, but I do appreciate your donations um, during this time. And I do use it to then uh, continue to bring you quality programs, research things that I think are interesting for you um, and buy these campuses and paints. Okay, so I've got all these pastel colors going on. I'm really kind of um, happy with the way it's turning out. And now with all the colors I've mixed up, I'm just kind of going back and filling in little pockets that I think could add a little bit, have a little bit more punch. Yes, I love a little bit of red in there. I'm going to show you how I did all the dots and things like that. Um, I'm going to put in a little bit of this because the dots are actually put in with a lot of splattering, believe it or not. And I'm not going to be able to splatter too much when I'm standing up uh, doing this or it's just going to kind of drip down. But I will do a little bit of it. So I'm going to go ahead and put in a couple of fun, bolder colors since I'm not going to be splattering to the entire canvas tonight, but I will after I say goodnight tonight. I'll lay it down flat and then I'll be able to stop. Okay, so I really got um, the whole canvas covered at this point and my trees could use a little bit more definition now because they were kind of ghosting as I drew them. So I'm going to go back now and really define my trees. So I'm a little bit out of brown. I got to remake my brown. So I'm going to use a little blue, a little red, a little orange. And I got some brown. Of course, you could go buy brown. I use so much brown in my work that I have a big old thing of brown but it's really important that you know how to do it. And brown comes in so many different browns. It's not a color. I'm not gonna call it a color. It's not on the color wheel. So, um, you know, you can have sienna brown, raw umber, which is a really darker, bluer brown. So, you know, if you can learn how to mix your own, you'll have them in a pinch. Okay, I am gonna just go back over my trees a little bit. You add just a hair of water. That sounds weird saying a hair of water. Water is fluid. <laughs> and so if you just add just a tad of it, it will help um, your brush move along a little bit more smoothly. Acrylic paints are water-based. They do love to be hydrated, but not like water color. Hence the word watercolor, which is mostly water with a little bit of color. This is a uh, tint. The colors are tinted with raw material. And you can hydrate them just a tad to get them moving along. Sometimes I even keep a little spray bottle handy and I'll just spray my palette give a few sprinkles so it's all hydrated. So keep a, keep a spray bottle handy. And it could be one like the kitchen sink one. That's what that bud was a while ago. My model fell down. You can see mine's very well loved. 
You can get one of these at the dollar store and just fill it up with water and squirt your palette. Okay, so I'm just twisting my brush and making all of these really cool limbs come to life even more. And I even have some blue stuck on my brush. I love that in the tree limbs. You know, it doesn't have to be the perfect brown, but you're giving it that second coat. Most dark, most dark colors need to have a second coat anyway. And you might see new opportunities where you want to add more limbs. But go, definitely hit all the spots where you have a little bit of uh, canvas sky kind of showing through. Now, there is a dark and light side to our trees. And you're saying, what? Well, if we want them to look three dimensional, we need to make them have a light side and a dark side. So we're going to do that too. We don't have to do it on every tree. Plus, it's going to be hard for you to think about where your light source is coming from. So it could be your sun, it could be your moon that is shining onto the tree. So I'm going to say that my Mr. Sun is somewhere over here, just because I can see my pretty tree shadowing behind me right now. So I'm going to say this is Mr. Sun. If you have to draw yourself a little S up here so you can remember where sun is, Believe me, I've done that. That sometimes you just gotta give yourself a little boost there. Okay, so the light side where the sun is hitting it is gonna have a little bit of white on that side. So I'm just gonna run a little bit of white. On the left side where the sun's hitting. Now the tricky part's gonna be when you get past this one, right? The sun's not hitting the top of that tree. The sun's hitting the tippy top of the tree. So you gotta think as you go around, where is the sun hitting my tree? You can't use the right side all the way around. Excuse me. This, like this side, has got the left side. So this is now the left side of the tree is getting light. So I'm twirling my, my brush. I'm extending the paint as I go. It's all in my arm. I'm using all the paint that's loaded onto the brush. Now they're becoming dimensional. You do not have to do it on every tree. You're giving a suggestion that these definitely have dimension. Okay, you can do it on some of the branches, especially these bigger guys. Right? The bigger guys could use a little bit more pizzazz. All right. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, now I'm going to do the dark side. How are we going to get darker than brown? We don't even have black. I don't even use black practically at all. So I'm going to put more blue and red. I usually put more blue in my brown. This is going to be my dark side. Kind of like an eggplant. Just en it's just enough difference from my reddy brown or my yellowy reddy brown that you can see a difference. And I'm twirling. I'm twirling. 
I used to be a, a twirler in middle school. I don't even think they do that anymore. I don't even know if that's a thing. Okay, I can have another a couple more hands, holding hand trees, not a problem. I think I need another one there. This is where you get to really finesse it. Wow. Okay, so I think I think I need one right here. Okay. Now, what about all those awesome leaves? Well, when I was thinking about this particular composition, I was thinking about the aspen up in Flagstaff area. Could be, um, you know, if you live in the Appalachian area, if you're on the East Coast, uh, those those um, trees almost with their leaves glisten, like they almost have shimmer when the light catches them, and they just look like little round pockets of shimmer. So I was thinking about that, how it was just uh, colored shimmer dots everywhere. That's what put through my head. But you, you could do what I did over here, which is I just blotched it, right, using my hog's hair brush to make clumps or bunches of uh, boughs of the tree, or you can do the dot method. So there's no right or wrong in art. It's just all opportunities to create. Now you could use the other end of your paintbrush to make the dots, right? So I could just dip my brush into the red and start making dots. Of course, you're going to have to double dip a lot. Like, you, you know, it's only gonna hold so much cause it's not even a brush, it's just a piece of wood. You could use Q-tips, I've done that before. You could use your finger if you want. So I'm gonna put mostly the reds right toward the bottom. Red is such a bold color and heavy. Remember I talked about the weight of the painting. So if you're studying composition, doing photography, you have to think about things like that. So I, I like having more of that bold red. I got a little bit of, of it up here, but the majority of it is down here. I could even paint with the end of my brush to just kind of drag it a little bit. If you have um, a nice tipped round brush, of course, you could do it that way too and make little dots. Or big dots. These are my shimmering leaves. I'm going to do several colors. So right now it looks a little crazy with all that red, but it's going to have different colors. Isn't this fun? Now, who wouldn't love doing that? Be like the impressionistic painters and be a dot painter, a pointillism painter. It's fun. Okay, I'm gonna switch and do a different color. Can't wait to see what you guys are creating. Oh my gosh. I'm sure it's really, really pretty cool. All right, here we go. I'm gonna do, what am I gonna do next? How about blue? I'm doing what, what I suggested over there. I'm starting with dark colors and then I'm gonna work my way up to the light colors. Cause if I start with the light colors, I'll end up covering them up with the dark colors. So I am gonna start with just blue now. I'm gonna use the back of my brush. They're going to get smaller, the little dots get smaller, the closer they are to the center, and more muted. So I might do teal and baby blue dots closer. So the more bold ones are the ones closer to you. That's just how it works. And you can pretend like you know that's a bow branches right there. So you just 
dot away right there, right? You could do that. Or you can just randomly put them wherever you want. And that's how I did it. Yes, I did some splattering too. And I'm going to show you how to do that toward the end. few dark blue, but again, I'm not going to get too weighted up here at the top. All right. Okay. Now I think I'll put in some green dots. mixing together too. Now yellow is a more transparent color. So if you feel like it's getting lost, you need to add some white to it. It's just the nature of yellow. This is a very fun, happy painting. Or we could be like Bob Ross and say happy little trees. <laughs> okay, now I'm going to dot with some of my pastel colors. So I got all my bold ones. I got all my primaries done, a few secondaries. So I'm going to go over here to my pink. Paint and I get those a little bit closer to the atmosphere that, that's happening in the center. They need to be a little bit smaller the closer they are to the center. Because it's far away. Believe it or not, adding white is really going to be nice too. Let's do some baby blue first. And we're dotting, we're doing a dot painting. You didn't even know you'd be dot painting school, did you? Or blotching, if you're a blotch, your personal room. Okay, I need to get smaller as I get closer in, and I'm going to use the end of my brush and dot white ones closer in to the center. Smaller. Oh, I don't care if some get out of control big. Okay, so if I did want to do a little bit of splattering, you're going to have to take two brushes. I'm going to do a little bit, just like I said, because I don't want to get my entire floor just crazy, crazy. So, here we go. I'm going to take uh, a brush that's wet. Not this one, it was 
this one here. So you have to have, the trick is to have one brush wet that's got the paint on it. And you're gonna be tapping against it. So I can tap and I get all these fine little particles. So that's how you can get some really small ones near the center. But if your brush is not wet, it won't splatter. getting it all over my glasses and everything else. Okay. Maybe I'll try a little yellow. Oh boy, you should see my floor. <laughs> it's going crazy around here. Okay, so if it, if you get if it gets too um, splatter happy, just take your paper towel and just kind of scumble it in there, and it just makes a little bit more atmospheric. I still can see my dot. I gotta cover that dot. So. Oh, now I've got a few little clouds going there. Yeah, I like that. Okay, so are we ready to keep on rolling here? We've got about five or 10 more minutes. So I have pretty much gone around, I've been dotting everything. And you can see in this one, I have really tiny little limbs now. So I am going, because I do have a smaller brush, for the sake of time, I am going to switch to a really smaller brush to get some of those. But you don't have to have this, you really don't have to. So I'm going to get some really skinny. Still twirling. But I want to make a couple of little Y's up near the top. This really fills it in. And I'm using a little bit of the more bluey brown because the atmosphere changed up high. I could even put a little white into the bluey brown and make it a little more gray. It's not as heavy of a color. A little bit darker, I mean lighter. And just adding more of that light gray, charcoal gray, lighter than the brown. Filling it all in. See, if we put those on at the beginning, they would have gotten covered up with our patchwork or our leaves. So that's why I add the tiny, tiniest of twigs at the very end. I'm twirling my brush. I'll put some rogue ones over here. This could be fun. You put it up on your ceiling or in your dentist's office. <laughs> There's something to look at. <laughs> My son went to the dentist today. After they've been closed for so long, he said it was quite an interesting trip. But they got it down to a science. Literally. And get you in and out of there. Okay. Wow. So they're really, I'm just twisting with that um, charcoal gray that I made, which is my, it was my dark side of the tree trunks. 
and I added a little white to it. And that's how I'm getting kind of that little bit lighter putting it in some of even these big splotchy areas and just filling it all in. I can't wait to see what colors you all did, you know? And every time I do this, I get a different one. It just depends on the blue, whatever paint I'm using, it's gonna look different. Like I think with this one, I had um, a Prussian blue rather than a phyla blue. So that's why this one's looking a little different. Just depends on the paint color that you start with for your primaries. If you have a lemon yellow versus a cad yellow. Wow, how fun. What fun on a Thursday night. Okay. So I'm going to uh, spend a few seconds telling you about Saturday. If you want to chime in with, with me on Saturday, I'm so excited. Um, so I'm kind of sticking with the tree theme. Uh, if you joined me this Tuesday this week, we did a red room with Matisse, Matisse inspired. And now um, with this one, I don't know that I was inspired by anything other than nature around me. And the same thing for this one, except it's trees. So you are going to do a ginormous palm tree. So all you're going to see is the barrel up near the top of the palm and all the fronds. So this will be fun because you're going to do the same thing with just creating a light background like we did tonight. And I'm going to teach you just how to use that round brush to make all those fronds do a little splattering. Pretty much a lot of the same techniques, only we're getting closer. So that's going to be fun. And then we have one more Saturday class. So this will be this Saturday, the, the palm tree. And then the following Saturday, we are doing a prickly pear. So if you like Southwest art, this will be fun. Again, I've got a little splattering going on. So that's going to be fun too. And then that'll be it for our Saturdays. We're only going to be doing Thursdays and Tuesdays after next Saturday. Um, so that's nine o'clock Arizona time, Mountain Standard Time. I don't know where you're coming from, but if you're on the East Coast, that's three hours difference. Uh, so it'll be lunchtime, your time, and we'll just be having coffee. But it's all good. It's all good. Um, so you can sign up for that online, just like you did for this one. It is totally free. You just show up. And um, I did want to tell you that if you missed anything tonight, like you feel like you're, I went a little fast or you didn't quite catch something, you can catch it on YouTube. There might be a little bit of a take delay or it might be, she may have uh, edited some edits or whatever. So maybe check back tomorrow and you can watch it and catch up. Um, let's see, what else? If I'm missing anything. So I think at this time, um, we might just undo all your mics if you want, and you can show me your artwork. That'll be fun. And don't forget to sign it. Sign your 